Armored dinosaurs are a commonplace part of any well-researched piece of paleo art. However, their diversity is often overlooked. The only ones that the general population knows about are the biggest North American Stegosaurus and Ankylosaurus. However, there were just so many from the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. Unfortunately for the America-centric folks, many of these armored saurians come from Asia, so they don't get as much fanfare as American forms. Let's change that with a relatively newly described giant ankylosaur from China, Washia Jolong. When it comes to the study of dinosaurian evolutionary history, some groups have a better track record than others. One of the major dinosaur groups with a not-so-great fossil record is the armored dinosaurs, the Thyreophora. When I say they have a bad fossil record, I mean more towards their origins. A handful or more of some of the earliest forms of armored dinosaurs are known to science, and they seem to be increasing gradually with time, but they still remain the weakest part of the armored dinosaur tree. The much better record is of the more advanced forms, which have been split into two huge groups, the plate-backed, spike-tailed Stegosaurians of the Jurassic and very earliest Cretaceous, and the heavily armored, spike-collared or tail-clubbed Ankylosaurians. If I focus on the heavier armored of the two groups, you will notice it is further divided into two huge groups, a recent convention. Within the Ankylosauria, there are the Parankylosauria and Euankylosauria. Parankylosaurs are a new group of armored dinos from southern latitudes. Not much is yet known about them, so let's move on. The Euankylosauria is all of the other ankylosaurs you may be familiar with. This group is divided into the two major ankylosaurian groups that have been known to science for over a hundred years, the small, spiny, clubless notosaurids and the large, ultra-armored, clubbed ankylosaurids. The ankylosaurids are the ones that everyone thinks of when they think of heavily armored dinosaurs, all thanks to its namesake, Ankylosaurus. However, the majority of these ankylosaurids come from Asia. All American forms likely originate from Asian animals that migrated into North America. The interesting part is that the Asian record of these ankylosaurids also tends to be much better. All the way back in 1986, a nearly complete skeleton of an ankylosaurid was discovered and extracted from an Upper Cretaceous aged outcrop of the Tangbian Formation in Longxi Village, Gonju Town, Guangchang County, Fuzhou Municipality, Zhongxi Province, Southern China. Once it was brought to a local museum, the Zhangxi Provincial Museum, it was cleaned and prepared before being ascensioned into the collections where it remained until a group of Chinese paleontologists looked into the specimen and fully described the thing as a new genus and species in April of 2024. Adding a new genus of Ankylosaur to the list is always great, even though it doesn't really help unshroud their origins, as it does help to create a more and more robust bank of data to use in analyses of evolutionary relationships. The new Ankylosaur consists of basically the entire skeleton, with the exception of the skull and neck. The thing preserved 9 back vertebrae, a possible hip vertebra, 17 tail vertebrae, 2 pieces of the part of the tail that is fused into the handle of the club, 2 major club osteoderms, 27 ribs, all of the left shoulder and chest bones, some of the right shoulder and chest bones, a bit of the sternum, both humeri, ulnae, and radii, 3 finger bones, both halves of the top part of the hip, and the part that points backwards, both femora and tibiae, four toes, and three pieces of armor. With this much of the skeleton intact and enough anatomical traits to determine the critter as a brand new genus and species, the author team went with Huaxia Zhoulong, Shawen. The first part of the genus name is Pinyin for China, with the second half being Pinyin for armor, and the last part meaning dragon. The species name translates to painted in the shape of a beast. 
So the scientific name means Armored Chinese Dragon Painted in the Shape of a Beast, which is pretty damn cool if you ask me. Thanks to the incredibly good specimen, a relatively great picture of what it looked like when it was waddling from plant to plant can be achieved. Based on what armor was found with the specimen, it did not seem to stray too strongly from armor types or patterns that are seen in other Asian ankylosaurids. That being said, not much of the armor of Hua Xiao Zhulong was preserved. After all, the stuff often falls off the body and is taken away by the jealous forces of nature before, during, or after the whole stinky thing gets buried and begins to fossilize. The majority of the long tail is complete, so it tells you it carried around the typical ankylosaurid bone breaker. Hua Xia Zhou Lung seemed to have had a half and half tail. The front half was made of normal vertebrae that interlocked with one another and allowed lots of sideways movement and little up or down movement. The second half of the tail is fused together into a solid handle that ended in the club, which is made of a pair, in this case, of large lumps of bone called osteoderms. The solid handle of the tail composed much more of the tail length in Ankylosaurus, Euoplocephalus, and Kin. These forms had more range of motion in the base of the tail so that they could swing the weapon with more power. Like most ankylosaurids, or thyreophorans in general, Washia Jolong had a lot of junk in the trunk. They were very wide animals with short, robust limbs, and this requires a lot of stability across the whole skeleton. There is no better example of this than the pelvis, which was heavily fused, wide, and mostly parallel with the vertebral column. It helped to protect the critical inside bits the animal used for fermenting its food. Everything else needs to be inferred from close relatives. Speaking of which, uh, why don't I get to that? When all of the anatomical traits of Hua Xia Zhulong was turned into data and placed within the phylogenetic software known as TNT, the authors compared that data with data from all other ankylosaurids, something that had been collected by ankylosaur expert Victoria Arbor and friends in 2015. The new analysis found Hua Xia Zhulong to be most closely allied with the also Chinese Xinyun Pelta. One analysis found the two to be sister taxon within their own grouping, while another analysis found them to be each other's closest relatives but with uncertainty as to their exact relationships. This makes Hua Xia Zhulong the second ankylosaur described from Zhongxi province this year, the first being Datai. However, the authors provided strong support for Hua Xiao Zhulong and Datai being completely different animals. The skeleton of Hua Xiao Zhulong has all of its bones fused. Meanwhile, young individuals have unfused bones. Plus, they come from different geological formations of different times in the late Cretaceous from different parts of Zhongxi province. Plus, Hua Xiao Zhulong was much larger. How much larger, you ask? Well, why not I do the right thing and bring in Mr. Man from Animal Planet's The Most Extreme to give you that succulent Chinese meal? Since the specimen is relatively complete, not much estimation is needed to get an accurate size. Washa Jolong measured around 6 meters, 19.6 feet in length. This makes it among some of the largest ankylosaurids, as even ankylosaurus itself, the largest of the ankylosaurians, was between 6 and 8 meters, 20 and 26 feet. That's a lot of dino. Thanks, Mr. Man. An ankylosaurid of this size must have needed a lot of nourishment, aside from a succulent Chinese meal, in order to not die. Not a ton of vertebrate fossils are known from the Tongbian formation. In fact, not much is out there on this formation, and only a few dinosaur remains have been collected from this rock unit. Based on its physical and temporal proximity to Datai, one may not be far off from inferring this area wouldn't have been much different during the time of Hua Xia Zhulong, which would have meant the presence of lots of good foliage for it to munch on, plus tyrannosaurs, titanosaurs, ornithomimosaurs, dromaeosaurs, birds, and maybe even some ceratopsians every now and then. It's always good to get a new armored dinosaur. 
For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.